Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Breen. Um, I'm a business analyst um, and data scientist. I transitioned from um, petroleum engineering to um, data science and um, been writing a lot about data science and um, uh, software engineering. Um, okay, so this is just um, a bit of my bio. And um, over the years, I think three to four years now, actively being in the data science space. So I believe I, I have um, some insight I can share with you as well. So um, the, um, the, the, the topic of today is um, introduction to AI for petroleum engineers. Um, this is just like saying, uh, this slide is supposed to cover all the applications of AI in petroleum engineering. That would be very, um, very broad. So um, the way I'm going to take this um, class is to um, give you an idea of how these things work. Um, so you can actually have um, an open mind and look at it from um, a research piece where I can apply this when I, once I have this and stuff like that. So um, there's a whole lot of buzz around AI, uh, machine learning, data science, and um, the likes. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to point out was that AI has like a wide range of um, sections, um, which are just trying to um, create systems that that um that can solve problems and make decision more of like in a human um like like a human mind not necessarily working in the logic of how we think or how we solve problems but be able to solve problems in society various sectors in this in this context petroleum engineering that um that would that would have required um, maybe um human to make decisions so it's more of like helping us to leverage um, um, data, help us to leverage technology, help us to leverage our time to make these decisions. So from um, the slide, you can see if, um, there was a mention about um, having the ability to harness amounts of data and using that to um, make optimal decisions via like learned intelligence. So learned intelligence should be um, like a keyword here today, like learn intelligence so it's more of like um these systems are actually learning through data to make this um these decisions if um like the ai space um has a lot of keywords so um most times we have this notion of data data is a new oil data picked oil data is the most valuable um um it's the most valuable asset on the planet yeah and um there's this uh, data paradox that says uh, um AI is, and data is the foundation of artificial intelligence that you need AI and data to build um, to build these AI systems and the likes. But um, like I said, I'm trying, trying to um, open your horizon in this class. So um, the data paradox is just trying to say that rather than just having it on that, um, looking at it from that um, um, angle, we can also, AI can also serve as an instrument to help us like identify patterns and um, can serve as a tool and um, the data also can, can serve as like uh, a power, powerhouse for these AI systems. So, um, so what I'm trying to say is that for these various uh, applications that, we, that we'll get to see as we go across the whole AI system, the um, AI applications in various industries, engineering, movie, um, and the likes, um, there's, there's a lot of data power in them. And also we need these AI systems to help us analyze more data that are coming and um, make better decisions and like fair insight that we get from them. Like, um, like um, I said earlier, AI is all around us. If you take up your phone today and um, you look at your apps from Siri to Google Assistant to um, Netflix recommendation system, we're also surrounded by AI systems. So, um, the, the idea that we had maybe that AI would just come as a robot that's taking over the world, that notion, it's far-fetched because we're actually using all these things from your search optimization to ranking. Sometimes you just talk about something and you, um, you talk about something and um, your laptop starts giving you um, search results that are similar, or you see that when you go to YouTube, like you have this perfect fit of what you, what you want to watch part-time. Those are like, 
powerful recommendation systems and the likes. So we are all surrounded by AI, whether we like it or not. We are surrounded by AI. We use them every day. And um, yeah, so um, when we talk about um, like this data, I remember when I was in, um, I remember when I was in school, I was trying to do my um, a project. I was looking for data, I was looking for data, I was looking for data. Everyone was just looking for data, but do we actually know what data is? Like we are surrounded by data and we are still looking for data. Like data is everywhere from your text message to your pictures, all that is data. So in order to understand this better, understand this better in terms of application, um, we have um, two major types of data. We have the um, structured data and we have the unstructured data. So um, structured data are data that can be easily formatted, organized into tabular forms, um, rows and columns, more of like your um, Excel sheets, CSV, Excel files, and, um, and the likes. So um, this is the type that we, um, that we are more familiar with in terms of like data that can work easily. You can easily use it to do visualization from your Excel and stuff like that. Um, you can also be easily stored in relational databases. So um, this is one we're quite familiar, but this makes a very um, little number of the whole data landscape. Um, approximately 80% of the world data is unstructured. So what is unstructured data? These are data that have no um, predefined pattern, like um, they have no structure, you cannot put them in rows and columns. Um, here we talk about things like text data, um, images, audio files, um documents social media comments your tweets and stuff like that so these are data that you can't you can't you can't put in an organized manner yeah even if we, we might try to um try to uh maybe try to structure them that's what we, we have the bridge between structured and unstructured we have what we call semi-structured we try to like tie them both maybe for your analysis and stuff but um images you can't put a structure like um, a pattern like okay this is how a picture is um if you take 10 pictures in a particular place based on the um lights um lighting in the house per time there are going to be variations in those 10 so how, how can you arrange and um, structure that so um that's where unstructured data comes and this makes a whole number of um a good percentage of the total data set um data that we have in the world yeah so um, and the data it keeps increasing. Um, I think uh, um, a statistics from um, the um, um, the World Forum says we're going to make about um, twenty five exabytes, um, uh, yeah, exabytes of data in 2020, uh, 2025. So this data set is keep growing. These are things that you can store on your hard drive. These are things that um, that you need cloud resources to actually process them and stuff like that. So um, this is just like giving you um, an idea of what the kind of data that we need to power these AI systems. Like I said, AI is like um, it's a broad field that uh, contains various sectors. So um, some of the major um, sectors that we have uh, are, are listed here. This is not this is not all. It's just just for um, um, context of our class. So we have predictive analytics, we have fission, we have speech, we have robotic and IoT, we have natural language processing, um, we have um, expert system. So um, we'll try to break it, each of them down. Um, so um, predict that predictive analytics, um, these, are, these are techniques, this comprise of techniques that we use to try to predict unknowns. So um, like the like name says, predictive analytics. So we're trying to make predictions about the future or about um, certain trends. So um, under predictive analytics, um, um, the whole concept of machine machine learning comes into place where we try to um, make uh, machines learn, make um, computer AI systems learn to be able to make predictions based on what they have learned on um, future trends and uh, future instances. The uh, under predictive analytics, that's where we have um, the whole concept of uh, machine learning um, that tries to um, learn from this data and improve its experience so to make better predictions. So you have a historical data of things that happened in the past, um, be it um, your reservoir data, production data in the past, and um, you try to um, adapt that data to future trends. So, um, okay, if this scenario happens, um, again in the future 
um, this is um, based on what we have before. These are like um, the possible resolution and stuff like that. So um, under this section, we have um, things, um, three main um, categories. We have the supervised, um, supervised machine learning method. We have um, unsupervised um, and we have um, semi-supervised. So, um, so under the supervised learning, these are, this is where you're trying to make um, your your system learn from data why you label um, um label out tie your data let's for example let's bring it to context um we have um uh, drilling reports and um we have um where maybe scenarios where our mod with as um a mod is um, um lesser and could lead to a plot so we have that kind of data and we label them or um label them maybe blowout or no blowout or stuff like that and we use that to train our model so in the future once such that, uh, once that scenario instance come up we could quickly um identify and said oh from our from our predictions this um this uh this this instance might need to be blowout so that could prevent um uh, what's called future occurrence or stuff like that so um rather than maybe manually looking at it or um or maybe having fixed rules because, like I said, most times there are patterns that we cannot not, that we cannot see. So definitely there are systems there, like um, control um, control systems in place to prevent that. But um, there are scenarios that we can't have like an like a holistic um, overview of everything because it might be overwhelming. These are data that comes in real time and um, different devices, different sensors. So it might be overwhelming. But with this. Um, believe analytics techniques, we can actually be able to allow the machine based on past data to understand some certain patterns that are not visual to humans or that we cannot see. So, um, so that's that. So we have um, um, the supervised learning. This way we try to um, put um, the labels, the corresponding labels to what we are trying to um, train the data on, the historical data. Um, um, so under this, we have things like classification and regression. So we're trying to classify between um, um, maybe two classes or multi-classes. Um, okay, like I said, blood and no blood, that's like a binary class, two classes. But um, depending on the various um, application, you can be able to have um, um, different um, classes that you're trying to predict. So um, that's that. We also have regression. So regression uh, analysis covers um, trying to predict um, continuous values. So uh, maybe um, you're trying to um, predict that uh, maybe the drilling direction and uh, those are like continuous values and stuff like that. So yeah, so um, that's more on supervised um, supervised learning. We have unsupervised learning. Um, here we are. We 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 don't have the labels. So um, we are trying to infer infer like um, what class. Or what group some data set identify with? So uh, one 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 famous um, technique here is called clustering, mm. where you're trying to based on the data set you have, um, you're trying to find inherent groups in the data. So um, maybe you're grouping based on like um, the inherent group, the various classes that, that are identifiable in the in the data set. So this one you're not giving it a class. So you're not giving it a class. So um, it's it's going to um, do that um, based on on the like the inherent group that are identifiable in the and the data set. Then we have semi supervised, which is like between supervised and unsupervised. So um, here you feed it both labeled and unlabeled data for training. Okay, so um, that's that for predictive analytics. Um, um, for co computer vision, so uh, computer vision works with images, data images. So this um, covers um, on structured data. So um, this we're trying to just derive meaningful information from digital images. So um, like uh, the facial recognition um, that is going on. Um, this morning I saw um, I saw a feed on LinkedIn that um, our iPhone now card um, from the latest update can actually um, um, what's it called scan our face and unlock our phone room if we have nose max. I think that's some mad applications of it as well. So I think they're using the pupil and um, the face structure to um, build those models. So this works with images. So we're trying to predict, um, understand trends 
we're trying to understand trends in images. So um, yeah, so um, um, this covers various um, deep learning, um, deep learning methods, CNN and the likes to build these models. I won't go deep into it, but just trying to just put it out there. So maybe if you want to do your research, you might be guided. So um, so like I said, we are not going to put this um, based on a fixed application. So um, just imagine um, um, the various um, maybe pipeline leakages downstream the oil field and the likes. Um, we could have drones inspect those and maybe train it with vandalized pipes so it could know when it sees a vandalized pipe or a vandalized system. Or we could even um, take it to maybe uh, rock um, layers like in terms of um, identifying some structure, uh, subsurface um, prospects. Maybe when you're doing um, exploration, um, like various seismic studies and um, visualization to find like where our X points. So rather than, like I said, data is increasing. I know we had 2D seismic, 3D seismic, 4D seismic, and who knows, we might have 5D seismic. I've, I'm not very um, up to date in portraying just about from when I left, I know there was so many advances in that. So um, you can see how we, we have more data, more data sourced, more data points, cutting across different um, domains. So it might be very difficult for you to actually sit down and track all the patterns to know your X point. And this is time consuming. And from our industry, petroleum industry that we know, time is money. So um, we're trying to make more things faster, efficient, and the like. So these systems can help us count through millions of pictures, understand, OK, um, this is how it looks like. These are the trends. And be able to identify this quickly for, for the various operations that we have. So we're looking at um, rock samples, and stuff like that, we can use computer vision to know various levels, subsurface profiles, and yeah. So, like I said, uh, it's 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 limited to it's limited to um, your scope and what you what you feel this can do. Now we use it to do um, um, review some porosity maps, and uh, like just think about it. Where 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 in, where in petroleum field that you know that. Um, you 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 look for trend with your eyes and stuff like that. So imagine you're complementing that over like a million or a billion images per second, and you have systems that can actually train on these things and make better predictions. Speech is uh, is, is another subfield of AI where we try to do um, speech recognition. Hey Siri, like apply um, get trends from from um, speech. So. Uh, this is another um, subfield where AI is being applied. Um, majorly from recent trend, um, robotics and IoT is like um, where um, everyone has been more focused on in terms of automation, smart systems, and the likes. So, um, and that's where, uh, like, in terms of engineering, most of the applications have been applied because these are like um, physical components. Um, like that that contains so like like IoT that is like um that that, that has embedded sensors software embedded in it for the like purpose of transferring information, build better systems and the like. So this is like a place that heavily been um AI has heavily been applied in the petroleum sector. So um we are things about automated rigs. Um those automated rigs are may mainly built with a lot of sensors, um intelligent drilling um yeah things like that so um these are um ap 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 core applications where ai is being applied in um petroleum industry so like i said these systems breed or they breed with data and uh, like we you know when you're trying to like in the petroleum industry when you're drilling you have information per time per second down to milliseconds or yeah so those rigs are built on data so it's quite easily to it's quite easy to adapt like having an automated rig because you know everything is going to work based on sensors, based on data and data, fail safe um, systems, and um, and stuff like that. So this is like a core place because most of these systems that we're trying to automate or we're trying to make smart have interaction to the environment. So from the wind to um, water depth down to the pressure temperature and stuff like that. So these systems help a lot, making process easier, re re uh, reducing safety concerns, 
and a lot of it. So um, yeah, so this is um, like a major place that the oil and gas industry have readily applied um, AI to. But like I said, not limited to that. You can also apply AI to like different sections as well. So um, we move to uh, uh, natural language processing. So this is just trying to work with text, find patterns in, te in text and stuff like that. You might say uh, the petroleum industry does not actually need stuff like this. This is just language. But you think about it, understanding maybe British policies, safety concerns, and um, maybe to implement this, maybe while you're working, just giving you a use case, um, per, per the change in the environment, you have um, policies that are being read to you rather than just going through a whole manual or um, reading through or having like based on your circumstance. So this can help improve safety, help um, risk assessment. These are policies that are being written by humans. But like I said, they might get very overwhelming. Or uh, imagine when you're in the blowout and you're, um, there's a lot of chaos on the, on the rig floor and you're trying to scan or like understand what to do part time. And there's a system there trying to tell you, okay, based on this, I think you should do this and stuff like that. So these are just applications of, of AI. So um, last on the list, we have expert system. Um, um, the former ISP president, um, that's he, he wrote a paper about um, 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 augmenting, like AI augmenting our, our process. So um, that was like one of the people that actually made me make the transition. I think the paper I was written in 2018. Um, I was talking about like um, rather than five people um, working on the system, we have one or two people. So AI is going to augment like decision making rather than replace totally. So um, that's where like uh, I'll see the expert system comes into place. This is a system that tried to emulate you know, human decisions over um, like extensive um, bodies of knowledge. So um, so they help like in terms of decision making. So this this can go deeper than code. Um, this 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 goes into logic and stuff like that. So that's that. You could do some research on that, but. Um, these are just trying to, um, this domain is just trying to help in better decision making, crop complex decision making. We have a system that is built to withstand pressure, think logically and stuff like that. Break down complex problem, um, it, um, decision making to maybe straight resolution. So I think that that could that could help as well. So um, these are like the major subfields. Okay, so, um, so we have petroleum use case. So, like I said, the industry is facing a lot of issues from data management, um, handling, and stuff like that. We have a rich bank of data from various processes, um, various um, like um, sectors, cutting from exploration, reservoir, drilling, production. Um, yeah, so this is this is a rich field to apply these various techniques. Um, we have the exploration. Like I mentioned before, we have things like seismic analysis to help us uh, maybe drill our exploratory wells better and um, optimally we can explore a lot of images, data, seismic data, frequency, time series. So this is very limited to like our scope. So just think about it, like once you have the data and no one's know you can apply these various techniques, the, the approach is dependent on you. So, um, down to um, reservoir engineering, understanding the um, reservoir, porosity data. You can make estimates using various analysis, things like regression analysis, as simple as regression analysis. You can use it to, um, to estimate maybe porosity data, permeability data, and stuff like that. So um, it might not necessarily be a very big application. Like, like I said, once you cascade, AI down to like its various subsections. You know that these things are easily implemented. Once you just have your data, all you need to do, you can use any, you can use any um, library you want to use. You can use MATLAB, you can use um, Python, you can use R, you can use JavaScript to make this analysis. So the, the code isn't like, that's one good thing about machine learning and, um, the, uh, and um, this application. There are open source APIs that you definitely don't have to know how this, um, um, how this um, uh, recognition, maybe image recognition is being done, but you can easily use it. 
I think um, that's um, one of the trends of 2020 that we're going to have more seasoned data scientists, expert domains from other fields using AI applications for their day-to-day -day activities without having to know the intricacies of how KNN works or how the uh, neural network works. Just use them to like to do your to to do your jobs. So cutting across drilling, um, I think my my research work um, 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 back then was um, automated drilling. So I was I, I I did research work on automated drilling. So um, using AI, but then like I said, I was still in school, so uh, it was it was more of surface surface um surface um application I was just looking at, but that was far back 2018. But it wasn't accepted by my supervisor back then and stuff. So I had to do something around material balance and stuff like that. But it's just exciting that thank God that we all we're all in a stage that we have easy adoption now and uh, stuff like that. So you can actually implement this as simple as low level. There's a lot of risks in drilling. How can we help people? How can we stop the like how can we increase safety? So we can use things like IoT robotics in terms of drilling. And also in terms of tissue making, when to increase your mod with BOP, yeah, penetration rate and stuff like that. So these are things that can actually help you um, do faster, do better um, holes, finishing and stuff like that. So because like I said, these things are the petroleum field is a very dynamic, dynamic environment. You can be drilling and you already have a plan of, OK, this is the kind of completion I want to use. But along the line, you can see a whole lot of different um, profiles, subsurface profiles, and you might want to change. So, um, and like we know, it's it's capital intensive. One one wrong decision can make you lose billions of dollars. So, yeah. So this can actually help make systems more economical in terms of, of seeing these things ahead of time. Also, in production, uh, well completions and stuff like that, you can easily apply all these things if you have the context of okay how these various AIs can be applied rather than just looking at like uh, like a broad AI stuff like break it down what can you apply in, what sector can you apply to um this process what sector is it a past system is it IoT is it classification like different um different application what type of drill bits what class of drill bits like so you can just think this all over what policies are going to be implemented while drilling how can we make this in real time, there's some remote drilling that has been done. As you're drilling, a system is able to give them insight of policies that should keep in place, stuff like that. So it's, it's technology. Technology is so exciting because we have a lot of applications. So VR, we're talking about AI and like in petroleum engineering. Look at um, VR. Look at um, 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 for example, uh, blockchain is coming out. For example, now, and I, I know something about um, um, data. Um, why research in the data field is quite is quite difficult because of access to data. Like there's a lot of privacy concern, integrity, and stuff like that. Technology can help this keep the privacy in check, to keep the integrity in check with these new technologies that are coming. So um, rather than be scared of technology like have this over um, mindset of how you can apply it because i believe that once we have that mindset it's it's it reduces the fear and we be, be we become more valuable because we are actually making these things better um thank you very much and i'm so happy i give back to um my industry which i which i studied it's really nice thank you very much everyone